Good morning, uh, Rouser Radio, coming from Lewis in East Sussex in the United Kingdom. Welcome, join us. Well, if you can hear a little tap, tap, tapping in the background, that's my fridge. Uh, the office fridge which actually talks to me and uh, gives me quite a lot of advice uh, <laughs> like isn't it time to clean out the fridge and that sort of thing uh, <clears throat> anyway uh, welcome to Rouser Radio out of Lewis and I always say out of Lewis East Sussex because this is the world wide web and uh, uh, several Lewises around the, the world but one particularly in Delaware in the United States and if anybody in Delaware is uh, listening um, or wants to take part, welcome, because our two towns are quite close, even though we're not twinned in the in the uh, true sense of the word, but I know that your mayor was over here three or four months ago, and our mayor and past mayors have been to your delightful uh, little town uh, many a time, so we're two tiny towns tied together, not only by a name, but by the fact that we're rather fond of one another, and, uh, and we, we do actually... Uh, uh, mingle, if that's the right word. Anyway, uh, uh, this morning, a couple of things that uh, I want to talk about, and uh, the purpose of Rouser Radio and uh, Mirador Television is that we try hard to keep an eye on the local South Council. There is a council meeting tonight, council meeting at six o'clock, Lewis District Council. It takes place actually in the county council because uh, when they closed down parts of Pelham House uh, years ago, um, they had no chamber. So I guess that uh, what they do now is they share the cha- chamber up at, uh, at the county council. And uh, that's where uh, we shall end up. So uh, very interesting to see what's going on. There are a number of things, I think, that, first of all, I don't know whether there'll be mention made of the new uh, road that's proposed between Lewis and Eastbourne. We did a little survey uh, the last uh, couple of days or so, asking people on uh, Facebook, and particularly the groups which represent the tiny towns that will be affected, what they thought. Very interesting that uh, 50%, approximately 50%, were for uh, the development, 50% against. Uh, But we haven't done a a full analysis yet, and we'll bring that to you over the next uh, few days. But uh, the the thing that I found disturbing about the whole thing is that a lot of it is done in secrecy, and I think that's because councils are afraid that the electorate are going to turn around and say, don't do things, which are their pet projects. And if that's what they have to revert to, then I think that we're in pretty poor shape as far as democracy is concerned. And one has to ask, are we in poor shape because of, uh, uh, through democracy? Is democracy in poor shape? That's what I'm trying to say. Because we now have two councils, one executive. The the executive is Eastbourne and Lewis. And I don't care what you say, but uh, if you've got a, a council, if you've got two councils, then one of them uh, is, is going to find uh, reasons to do something that the other won't, don't want them to do. So I think that they're probably taking uh, the eye, their eyes off the ball when it comes to what the executive gets up to. And all the surveys, not all the surveys, but major surveys, suggest that when you leave an executive alone, it becomes less efficient and it becomes more costly. So first of all, our layer of elected official needs to be tougher and certainly we need the return of uh, people such as ourselves not necessarily this particular outlet but uh, local media to keep an eye on what's going on and they don't like it oh my goodness me no uh, the politicians do not like uh, being uh, uh, held up to um, examination by local media uh, they don't like being held up to examination at all but media particularly but remember uh, that we do have a certain responsibility, even if we do have also a certain power. Edmund Burke, the great statesman of the 19th century, uh, and uh, uh, once s- stood in the House of Commons and pointed to uh, various groups there 
and said, uh, th th this is our government. Um, the, the, the Lord's uh, temporal, um, meaning those who were inherited, uh, the, the Lord's spiritual, meaning the church officials that are members of the House of Lords, um, us, the House of Commons. And then he pointed to the, the, the press gallery and said, and there, perhaps more powerful than them all, is the fourth estate. And that's where the phrase, the fourth estate for journalism came. And, and I think that those of us who are responsible, we feel that we're responsible journalists, uh, really are, take the fourth estate seriously. We need to enter into the debate. I've often argued that really journalists should be very careful about getting involved in opinion um, because that can show bias. And of course, it, it, it shows bias. But, you know, British journalism has never been unbiased. It started in uh, the, the, the day of, of, of King Charles the, the Second, I, I think it was, when the pamphleteers would criticise the king. They would hammer their pamphlets, the first sort of newspapers, up onto telephone poles. Well, I suppose it weren't telephone poles, really, but whatever came to hand. And then ran like hell, because if they were caught, the king's men would, uh, would, would take them away, and the likelihood was, with, like, uh, like, one of the, uh, like King Charles I, they would have had their heads cut off. We don't have to suffer that anymore, but there are pressures upon us to stop doing what we're doing. And that really is indefensible on behalf of, of councils to use any muscle they've got to try and cap legitimate media and legitimate thoughts in media. Not talking about fake news. Yes, everybody can have 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 a, 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 a viewpoint on fake news and what should be done about it. I'm talking about legitimate uh, dissent, legitimate criticism. They like that less than they like fake news. Uh, anyway, um, I, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, local councils, but let, let's, um, let's let's take a, a look at what we've got here this morning. Um, well. The people of Bensound are, are terrific people. They turn out the stuff that, which they compose themselves and they play themselves, and they allow people like us to play it for free as long as we say where we got it from, and that's fair enough. So Bensound, um, very good stuff, and, and we use it a lot on both Mirador Television and Mirador Radio, and if at such time as we should start to make money, we most certainly will we'll pay for it. But at the moment, they allow us to use it for free, and that's, that's very, very generous, uh, but it's also interesting, and not stuff that you would necessarily hear anywhere else. So uh, how about this for, um, uh, from Ben Sound, uh, Summer?
Well, with the chance of snow on the way, that sounds uh, summery enough, I guess. That's the forecast again, is that the mild spell is going to end later in the week, and that uh, what we can expect is a, 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 a dose of snow. Always difficult to say where we are, and this is Keith Hayes with Rouser Radio from Lewis on the southern part of the United Kingdom, from East Sussex, in fact. And uh, we sometimes have a little microclimate here. When everybody else is having a heat wave, we we get a chill. And when everybody else is uh, uh, clear, we're getting snow. So who knows uh, what may be in, in store for the rest of the country. Uh, particularly, it's always a bit of a lottery if you live in Lewis. But it does affect us, of course, uh, if you want to get to, um, to to London. As far as I am aware, I haven't heard reports that the work has overrun between here and London. It should be back to normal this morning with trains. Uh, they're supposed, the work was supposed to have ended yesterday, Sunday. Quite often they have overruns, but uh, so far that hasn't been reported. So if you're going for the train, I think you probably... Well, hopefully you'll find that uh, you've got uh, somebody uh, waiting for you at the station. Uh, Perhaps those nice people at the runaway coffee shop uh, who um, feed me coffee whenever I'm down there and whenever we broadcast from there. It's one of our favourite places to broadcast from, and it's pretty good. Anyway, um, let's see how things go and uh, whether, in fact, we get snow. Uh, but if not, tuck up at the runaway and have a cup of coffee and have a chat to Pavel and uh, some of the uh, Lily and some of the Caroline, yeah, some of the lovely people down there who really make it a joy in the morning. If you're feeling a bit tired and weary and surly, they'll look after you. Never, never fear. They'll look after you. Pretty nice people they are. Right. Now, in Lewis... For those of you who don't live here, and perhaps it's not even an issue, about a year or 18 months or two years ago, something like that, we merged our executive and the local council. The executive now serves Eastbourne Council and Lewis Council. A little bit of the morning cough, and it's not... I hasten to add uh, the the smoker's cough. When I was working as a journalist in Northern Ireland in uh, 1980, at the height of the Troubles, we smoked like uh, chimneys, and I vowed to give it up, and I did, and I haven't had a cigarette since 1980. So it's not a smoker's cough, but occasionally a little froggy gets in the throat, and I have to clear it. Apologies for that. So the merger between Lewis District Council and uh, uh, Eastbourne Council at the executive level, not at the political level, at the executive level, has taken place, and it's a disaster. And there are others around the country now talking about doing the same thing. What it is, is it about we Britishers? If something goes wrong, we, we feel so guilty.